Hey guys, it's me, John Solo. I'm up here in the control room and uh, I'm doing something a little different for this story time. I started recording all of my sessions instead of just one because, well, it's just the kind of guy I am. Um, and it's specifically so I can pick a good scene to share for story time. Um, so this is my intro to it. Uh, this week we've been working on Sanctuary. It's Wrecked Book One by Kelly Fox. And this thing is fucking hilarious. She did a great job on it. I'm very proud of the work I did as well. Um, I just want to give you a heads up of what this is about. I'm going to read the summary, then I'm going to flip over to the live session. The live session was recorded a couple of few days ago. And just so you're aware, I'm not going to do all the pitter patter I do in the beginning normally, because I mean, it's just in the middle of a session. You're busting in live kind of a bird's eye view so to speak. If I had a bird in the booth, I'd be disturbed, but you're gonna be able to see the actual session and me not really thinking about recording and entertaining. So it is what it is. I hope you like it. Anyway, Sanctuary, Wrecked Book One by Kelly Fox. What's the first rule of running a gym by and for combat vets? Enjoy the scorching hot scenery, but get your kicks somewhere else. Never mind that my cousin slash business partner ignores that rule every chance he gets. I don't ignore it ever. And frankly, between Grinder and living in one of the gayest cities in America, it's not exactly a hardship. Hell, it's so easy I can do it on one leg. That is, until a pair of blue eyes swimming with vulnerability shows up at my door looking for a job. He's too skinny, too mouthy, and way too young for the likes of me, but he pings that protector instinct in me hard. I want to fix whatever put that lost look in his eyes, but to manage that, I'd have to do the one thing I said I'd never do. Break my own rules. Sanctuary is an MM military romance featuring hurt comfort, found family, and a gym full of ripped men wearing tight shorts lifting heavy objects. This is the first book in the Wrecked series. The characters Evie Scout, Jake, and Jean-Pierre first appear in Scout and the Lavender Girl. So, that's it. I hope you enjoy. I'm going to kick over to the session now. Have fun, guys. Love y'all. Chapter 17 Nick I like how Elijah waits for me in the shower now. The way he looks up at me with those big ice blue eyes. It hits me in the gut every time. Don't tell anyone. But I'm starting to develop a fondness for the man. In addition to being my dirty little shower slut, he's really, really good at his job. And he's only gotten better since his promotion. We have several cantankerous sorts that visit the gym. I know it's because ours is the only place where they feel like they can be themselves, even if they are a little rough around the it's edges. Uh, where they feel they can be themselves. Motion. We have several cantankerous sorts that visit the gym, and I know it's because ours is the only place where they feel they can be themselves, even if they are a little rough around the edges. My favorites are the ones that make him blush because it brings out the color of his eyes. So yeah, we've given each other handies about a dozen times, sometimes moving to more adventurous things like a little prostate action. His prostate, never mind. But he still seems jittery, kind of vulnerable. So I go slow with him. It's like we're boxers circling each other, not fully committed to landing a punch. I walk into the shower this morning and he's washing his hair, his position showcasing his lean form and cute little ass. He's definitely been working out, and the slightest hint of muscle definition is showing up under the light hair on his stomach and arms, especially his forearms and hands, which have taken on a slightly more masculine, corded look. Fuck, I have a thing for his talented hands, and the extra calluses only add to my enjoyment. He also put on a little weight, which was sorely needed. He did get some newer, but not new, non-work clothes. Not my favorite, but I know he's economizing. Part of me wants to tell him to cut his hair, but I can't say that I actually mind it. Since he startles so easily, I tap my crutch on the entryway twice. He opens his eyes, smiling, and I waste no time in making my way to him, hanging my brace on the shower head while I pull him into me with a hard kiss, netting an adorable squeak out of his lips. You sleep well? He looks up at me, dark smudges under his eyes, and I already know. You'd think with all the orgasms he'd be able to sleep better, but maybe he needs a top off before he goes home. I'd certainly be up for the job. Not really, but no worse than usual. He punctuates this with a sweet peck on my lips, then trails kisses down my jaw, down my neck, 
Finally landing on a nipple. God, this kid's got a talented tongue. He pulls the nipple into his mouth, applying a soft sucking pressure before grazing it with his teeth. Ouch! I playfully smack his ass, knowing he likes that. Serves you right. He challenges me with his eyes. Game on. I tickle my fingers along the skin over his ribs, which I know is super sensitive, and he lets out another squeak, then starts laughing uncontrollably. Seeing his body all bowed up with tension waiting for my next ticklish move while giggling and shrieking sets me off. I start laughing, and pretty soon we're both nearly falling over each other, hysterical as all get out. After a few moments of ridiculousness, we're breathing heavily and staring at each other, the mood going from playful to fucking dirty in two seconds flat. He stands up on his tiptoes, and I meet him halfway for a kiss that I feel in my balls. His lips are soft and sweet, but his intent is pure filth. I reach for his junk, and he bats my hand away. Smirking, Elijah goes to his knees. I inhale on a whistle as his hot mouth surrounds the head of my cock. <sighs> Fucking finally. He groans as he takes his time with the head. Stop. He moaned even. Mm, that too. Cock. <sighs> Fucking finally. He moans as he takes his time with the head, licking and sucking at the flared ridge, teasing me till I almost shove his head down and make him take it all. Pulling back, he arches an eyebrow at me as though he can read my thoughts. He grabs hold of my cock, stroking it up and down as he sucks one of my balls into his mouth, and all reason vacates my mind. Fuck, this feels awesome. He licks and sucks at the other ball just as good, making sure both get an equal amount of love, then in one swift motion takes my entire cock into his mouth. I'm not a small guy, you understand, but Elisha swallows it down like a champ. When I feel his throat work the head he'd been teasing for several minutes, I nearly come right there. I hold off because, oh, fuck it, this is the best blowjob I've ever had, and I don't I want to... Only hold off. I hold up. Head he'd been <clears> teasing <throat> for several minutes. I nearly come right there. I only hold off because, well, fuck it, this is the best blowjob I've ever had, and I don't want it to end. He rolls my balls and presses a finger into my taint, which is just another fucking layer of amazing. He knocks at my back door with a quick tap tap of his fingertip, but I shift back and grunt. <sighs> Exit only. He pulls back on a pop and nails me with those icy blues. Your loss. He shrugs and goes back to blowing my mind, practically pulling my brain out through the head of my cock. I swear if he asks for my bank account numbers, I'm giving them to him. Yeah, I'll take that. Cock. I swear <clears throat> if he asks for my bank account numbers, I'm giving them to him. Switching it up again, he grabs my ass for leverage and shoves himself even farther down along my cock, again with the swallowing motion at the throat, and this time, I don't have it in me to hold back. My balls tighten almost painfully, and electricity races along my skin where the water pounding down on us dances across my nervous system. I stifle a shout as I come in a torrent down his throat. Swallowing around my cockhead, Elijah drinks my cock come, taking me apart. I grab my brace and lean against it, no longer able to keep myself upright. He pulls back again and licks my dick clean, then angles a devil smirk in my direction. <sighs> Elijah, fuck, you've been holding out on me. We should have been doing this the whole time. His voice is a little rough, but he fires right back at me. Oh, yeah? Are you going to return the favor? I grumble under my breath and take his arm. Oh, stand up, you little brat. He does as asked, and I kiss him voraciously, licking my tongue through his mouth, tasting the sweetness of his minty toothpaste and the sharpness of my cum, pressing his body tight against mine. It seems I need every inch of him against every inch of me this morning. We kiss like that for several more minutes. 
my brain completely sidetracked. Finally, he pulls back, gasping for breath. <sighs> Holy shit, I guess I should have given you a blowjob earlier. I card my fingers through his hair. Yes, you should have. With that, I take my turn on my knee and attempt to swallow him down to the root. Unlike him, I actually do have a gag reflex and overestimate how much of his disproportionately large cock I can take into my mouth. He grabs a hank of my hair and pulls me off him. It's not a competition, silly. Besides, I don't like it when guys gag. I look up at him, expecting a smirky little self-satisfied smile. But he's got concern in his eyes. I fist him at the root, moving my hand up and down in time with my mouth, and he smiles and leans his head back. Elijah doesn't last long. He's already so turned on. With four or five good strokes, he's coming hard down my throat, body bent over mine. Fuck, that's satisfying. He pulls me up into a kiss, and I almost lose my balance. His strong, sure hands hold me in place, and we kiss like that for several long moments. I tuck his perfect body Stop. into mine. We kiss like that for several lost moments. It's the same thing. <clears throat> he pulls me up into a kiss, and I almost lose my balance. His strong, sure hands hold me in place, and we kiss like that for several lost moments. Where did they go? It doesn't make any sense. Long moments would imply that maybe they felt like long moments. Lost moments? I don't think. <sighs> Place. And we kiss like that for several lost moments. I tuck his perfect body into mine just because it feels good. I want so badly to move on from the shower and drag him into my bed, half because I so need to get up this guy's ass, and half because uh, I just want to hold him a little longer. Yeah, I'm not just fucking my employee. I'm falling for him. Maybe it's like socks. I don't, I just read it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go, really see. Well, it seems it's resolved. It's like socks. You know, where you put in the socks in the washer and then the dryer, the other side, only one comes out instead of two. Maybe that's where the lost moments are after good blowjobs. Somewhere between your washer and your dryer. Right. Falling for him. Elijah. I don't know what I liked better, making Nick's eyes roll into the back of his head or coming so hard I almost passed out. Let's call it a tie. Making out with him for another several minutes after also ranks pretty high up there, especially when he notches me up under his chin and just uh, holds me. I'm licking up the beads of water at his neck when I turn and notice the time. I curse and rush out of the shower, getting dressed in record time, then racing to turn the sign on and open the gym. Old man Morris is waiting for me at the door, his face dour. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that's just his face at this point. Three minutes late, kid. Not the way you're supposed to run a business. Yeah, well, you're not supposed to feast on the souls of little children, and yet here we are. I say, gesturing in his general direction. <laughs> he walks past me, pausing to move my collar to the side. Somebody had a breakfast burrito this morning. I flush as I cover the sensitive skin with my fingertips. 
Your hair ain't even dry, kid. Tell me, did I interrupt anything good? Just as he says this, Nick walks out of the bathroom looking supremely satisfied with himself. I curse my luck, and Morris digs me in the ribs laughing. <laughs> no need to answer, kid. I got all the proof right here. <laughs> His hair ain't dry either. Oh my God, kill me now. Just kill me now. Fuck, that was a great one, but there's no way Morris would say either. <laughs> Oh, and I love that laugh, too. Let's see if I can do it again. I curse my luck, and Morris digs me in the ribs laughing. <laughs> no need to answer, kid. I got all the proof right here. His hair ain't dry, either. Oh, my God, kill me now. Just kill me now. Nick looks up from what he's doing and checks us out, arching an eyebrow of his. Curious. I shake my head and gesture him away. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Turning to the old geezer, I decide on snark. Jealous, old man? When was last time you got laid? 1976? You forget about my Maggie, he says, waggling his ridiculous eyebrows. I rolled over and poked her on my way out this morning. Oh, for the love of God. And now I'm going to need a bucket of brain bleach to get that visual out of my head. Thanks. You're welcome. I mean... I've got to assume that you get wicked rock. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Being bleached to get that visual out of my head. Thanks. You're welcome. I mean, I've got to assume that you get wicked rug burn on your balls whenever you fuck her. He leans forward, letting his tongue loll out of his mouth. Yeah, but it's worth it. I pretend to dry heave, and he laughs at me, walking ahead to the rower. We go through his typical routine, but I make him slow down when I notice he gets winded. Don't fuss over me, kid. I can do it. I don't even know why you're hanging around here. Because it's bad for business when the old folks keel over on the machines. If you're going to die, please do so in the parking lot. He punches me in the hip with that gnarled up old fist of his, and it hurts more than I'm willing to admit. That motherfucker is strong, but he does let me slow down the pace of the workout, thankfully. When we wrap up, he gestures for me to follow him out the door. What's up, old man? Did you forget that you just did a workout? He knuckles the meat of my biceps, and I decide it's better to let him speak. No, you little punk. I just want to warn you. Nick, he's a good guy but he's got some history. Morris sounds uncharacteristically serious, which is weirding me out. No shit, was it the prosthetic that gave it away? Frustrated, he pokes my chest with his grim reaper finger. Listen to me, kid. I just don't want you to get hurt. He might not know how to give you what you need. And what do I need? I scoff. His face softens, which is super off-putting. What you need is someone who will take care of you. His words nearly knock the wind out of me. For the simple reason that the idea of someone, especially a particular someone, taking care of me, having my back, sounds like an amazing and impossible dream. And yeah, the soft touches and post-sex cuddling make me think that Morris might have it wrong. I can take care of myself just fine. He looks at my face and gives me a warm smile. Fucker. Sure you can, kid. But let's just say that it, I know where you live. And a guy with one of those sex buttons on his phone and a pattern of fucking run isn't gonna be your Prince Charming. Keep your voice down. I hiss under my breath. I look inside quickly to see if Nick can hear our conversation. He's at the front desk looking down riffling through some paperwork, and doesn't seem all that interested. Good. Did you see that? Did you see I made the distinction? Rifling, riffling? Ha, ha, ha. Look at that. Super narrator! Look at that shit. Some paperwork, and doesn't seem all that interested. Good. Look, I don't need anybody to fix anything for me. 
They just promoted me, and my first paycheck will be enough to get into a better place. You just mind your own business. He holds my gaze for a long moment, then nods and pats my arm. The gesture hurts, mostly because it's the same arm the son of a bitch bruised earlier, but maybe also because I know it comes from a good place. I let him go on his merry way and hope that he's able to leave well enough alone. All right, honest opinion, Trace. I could have played that differently. I could have been a bit more upset on the second to last paragraph, keep your voice down. And I also could have been louder in the paragraph prior to that with the old man. What do you think? I liked what you did. I see what you're talking about, but I liked what you did. Um... Carol did two, or did Taylor did three. Did you enough on the keep your voice down? Yeah, I wasn't so concerned about that one. I hissed it just fine. Everybody liked it, so I'm going to roll with it. Cool. Thank you, guys. Also, 